So today we're looking at some flowers from my own garden, hopefully a new series of tutorials, flowers from my garden. So welcome back to the start of what I hope will be a monthly series of videos where I show you what I've grown in my own garden and how I can arrange them and how exciting it is for me to be able to bring in some of my own flowers to share with you. Now the container for today's design I think has come from B&M which is a shop here in the UK. If it's not from B&M it's from one of those very similar stores and it's this trough like container with the rope handles on the end and because I'm arranging flowers from my own garden I thought I'd go with a more environmentally friendly option and use the wire netting. That's been rolled into almost like a sausage shape. I've got three layers of the wire mesh and I'm going to add some water in there so that I've got a water source for my fresh flowers and everything that I've got was picked yesterday very early in the morning before it got too hot and that's really important when you're picking locally grown flowers or flowers from your own garden is that you pick them first thing in the morning or last thing in the evening when it's really cool and they've had a really good drink. Don't try and collect them in the middle of the day because they really won't survive but I've got a really pretty selection if you've already seen the video that I've done with a jug and just some very basic peonies, I used a dark burgundy colour peonies and I've got a very similar, almost identical one that's in my garden, but it only had three flower heads on it. Those three flower heads are pretty much at the end of their lifespan. So I've picked them and brought them in to share with you. But if you haven't got flowers in your own garden, then you can copy this quite easily with supermarket flowers. Just try and find shapes that are similar to the flowers that I've got today. Now I've got this amazing plant. This is called Libertia grandiflora. And this grows very much like an iris with a clump of foliage at the bottom. And then we've got these really tall branches. This year it is absolutely magnificent. I think it's the biggest it's ever been. I don't really do anything to it. Um, I just leave it in the garden and it seems to see to itself. I am hoping this year that I'm going to be able to dig it up, split it and move it to different parts of the garden as well. So hopefully we'll see it again next year. Now the container is not quite a boat shape but it's an oval shaped container. So I'm going to try and replicate that sort of um, semi-crescent crescent sort of shape arrangement. It is one of my favourite styles and I do that style of arrangement quite often. But I think that when you have a container that's oval shaped like this, the flowers naturally sit quite comfortably on the end. It also works really well for a parallel arrangement as well, where you can have flowers vertical and straight in the middle. But at the moment, I'm just working from left to right, making an outline shape. And for the clever ones among you, the ones that are paying attention to my container, might have noticed that it's leaking a little bit of water. And that's because I didn't practice beforehand and I didn't check that this container was waterproof. So in hindsight, I should have made sure it was waterproof before I started. But you know, just goes to show the even us professionals or us so-called professionals make mistakes as well. If you are buying a container like this, I would suggest you fill it with water first, check it's waterproof, before you make a YouTube video. But there we are, that's, uh, that's today's little boo-boo. Right, so the white colouring is a really good link between the colours in my container and I've gone quite horizontal, a little bit of movement on either side with the soft Libertia flowers and bringing the colour right into the centre as well so that I have a link from one side to the other. If you're putting a colour in a traditional arrangement on one side, try and bring it through the middle and out on the opposite side as well because it makes your eye very rhythmically throw, flow 
through the arrangement. Now another garden flower is something called Nautia with a K and you might be familiar with it but maybe assumed it was some type of scabious or some type of cornflower. This is Nautia. It grows really quite tall and I probably got it almost five or six foot but I've given it a little bit of a trim to encourage more flowers to keep growing on it and I'm going to use these towards the outside to introduce another colour and um, that's going to sit really nicely there in my wire mesh. Now with this style of arranging where you haven't got floral foam you are a little restricted to the shapes that you can create so we can't always get those very geometric triangles and circles you've almost got to let the flowers speak for themselves and if they bend towards the left that's how we're going to put them in the arrangement if they're angled a little bit more to a particular shape maybe to the right even we're going to put them in in that place mine are fairly straight so i've worked them upright and out to the side no, nothing too taxing nothing too difficult but i am leaving this center section fairly free of flowers at the moment because that's where my main focal flowers ago my very large peony now for those of you who that have been a subscriber to the channel since i started i am really grateful for your support and for those of you that have joined along the way welcome if you haven't met me before my name is sharon and um, I started the channel back in lockdown because I needed to find a way of teaching lessons online and then the YouTube channel was sort of launched. But for those of you who are not familiar with a really clever system that YouTube offer, and that is, it's a fantastic feature called Super Thanks. And it's a way of you helping to support the creators. So if you look a little bit down further, just above the description box you'll find a little arrow and you can donate to keep this channel running and show your support for the hours of work that i put into producing these youtube videos now the channel started with the back to basic series that's been watched by thousands and thousands of people and back in that day i was very nervous hadn't done this type of thing before and what I've decided to do is to rerun those Back to Basics or that Back to Basics series so that we can look at it from a different point of view. So very shortly, when I've got a bit of time spare, we're going to look at recreating that Back to Basics series because it was really popular. If you have any questions or if there are any designs that you would like to see covered in that tutorial, then drop it in the description box below because I'm more than happy to look at ideas that maybe you want to learn. Now, if we take a little look at the outline shape that I've created here, we're slightly taller on one side and swinging over onto what is my right as I look at it. This one's not behaving, won't stay where I want it to go. I want it a little bit taller. There we are, that's a little bit better. No, I don't like that either. Let's just spend a bit of time getting that in the right position there we are that's better and there's not a, a huge amount of flower stems in the base there it's left me plenty of room to add in my bigger stalks but you will get a bit of movement when you're using wire mesh because the holes are fairly large which is perfect because no stems are going to get damaged when you're trying to force them there into the wire mesh now the next flower i've started to add in is another garden flower this one is called GM. I think I might have used some orange ones previously, but this is, um, this is an unusual one in that it doesn't have a very large amount of petals around the flower. So you might think this is the seed head, but this is the flower. It's very, very simple. And I needed to cut it back slightly to encourage more flower heads to come on the plant. So thought it would be a really good time if I cut it all at the same time I could bring it in and arrange with it so so far I've got really light and airy flowers everything's quite linear your eye is being drawn right the way through to the outside 
and I don't have any visual heavy weight towards the center. Now this is a true a front facing design but you could really see it quite clearly from all directions but wouldn't that look lovely sitting on a mantelpiece or a big heavy dresser with lots of china and crockery on it. If I could tip it forward just a little bit for you you might be able to see how all the flowers are sitting nicely in that wire mesh and what you've got to remember is anything that comes from the left goes in the wire mesh on the left anything from the right stays in on the right hand side and don't cross your stems don't try and have them coming in from all different directions now my gorgeous peonies which i've sacrificed for today's video are this amazing burgundy color but i do know that you can buy peonies at the moment in lots of supermarkets they're just starting to come through there's british peonies around as well so make use of them now when they're in season because it's a bigger flower and it's dominant and visually very heavy i'm going to bring them towards the front remembering to make sure that i've removed any of the foliage that is going to be below the water line so that i keep that water nice and fresh there is quite a difference at the moment in color i've got this very dark center and a much paler outside to the arrangement but to link all that together we've got some of the snapdragons now these have been in my garden since last year they survived the winter so they are quite large and there's a nice big size head on them if you've started growing seeds this year or you've bought bedding plants don't worry too much if your snapdragons aren't as large as this quite yet now I've got three I didn't want to pick all of the ones from in the garden because I want to appreciate them in the garden as well but I'm going to add two on one side and one on the opposite side so I don't get that very symmetrical matching look so it's a bit more quirky more country in its feeling and look at that isn't that quite dramatic now here in Wales we have a wildflower, a flower that sort of self-seeds, some people might refer to it as a weed, this is valerian, it's not loved by everybody and this is something that self-seeds in my garden, it's something I haven't planted there but it attracts the wildlife, the bees really really love it and I've got a couple of different colours of it, this one is obviously pink, I've also got a dark red and for this style of arrangement, this very loose arrangement, it really, really suits the design. And I've got a couple of those just to add in. So I'm trying again to put the same flower and the same colour on both sides of the arrangement. So I'm making it symmetrically balanced, but not identical on one side to the other. I don't have a lot of greenery that I can cut that's in this sort of style. So what I have got is the perennial geranium and this is a lovely one and by cutting it on a regular basis it will encourage it to keep flowering through the summer so I'm going to use this almost like you would use your greenery to cover your floral foam or in my case my wire mesh and it's going to act like a transitional material to pull all of the design together now at the moment I'm working with it facing you and I'm just going to cover as much of that wire mesh at the back while the front of the arrangement is facing you. You can then appreciate all the lovely colours, textures and different flowers. And if you're limited to supermarket flowers, just think about buying something large for your focal point and then smaller, softer flowers to go more towards the outside. That makes a fairly pleasing arrangement. So you could go for spray carnations, you probably will be able to get hold of stock and sweet william this time of the year and both of those work really well. Now then just some foliage here towards the front because I can see that tape that I often forget to cover. That one's a nice long piece so we'll keep that towards the outside. I just need a few smaller pieces really low down to try and mask that tape there at the front slightly reposition I think that's coming along now if we look at the arrangement from all sides we've got width I've got height and if we look at it from the side we have depth so I have a front and a back 
the arrangement isn't flat and all squashed towards the middle. There is plenty of airiness to it, so I've got lots of space in amongst the flowers. And I'm going to finish with my final flower, and this is a strontia from my garden. First year I've been able to grow it, and I'm absolutely delighted that it's come through. This, I'm hoping, is going to keep me going all the way through the summer for different types of arrangements. And now I know that it does survive quite well in my garden. I might even invest in a few more plants. So one final piece of the chrysanthemum. This is the perennial chrysanthemum. It's not a chrysanthemum, it's a geranium. It's a perennial geranium. That final piece, hopefully, will bring all that design together and give me the first in the series of flowers from my own garden. Now, I hope you've enjoyed that one. Don't forget you have the option to purchase an instruction guide from my Etsy store, and I'll link that in the description box below. There's also a guide there explaining the elements and principles of design. And we're just about coming up to the end of our five week online course where I've taught five different designs without using floral foam and those videos are available for instant downloads. So you'll find those over on my website. But other than that, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, then please do so. Hit that notification bell if you want to be told every time I upload a new tutorial. And as ever, thanks very much for watching.